The top scorer on Georgia Tech's 2004 NCAA runner-up team, B.J. Elder was one of the most prolific three-point shooters in school history. The Madison, Georgia native was voted All-ACC Freshman in 2002 and placed third in ACC Freshman of the Year voting. He went on to twice earn All-ACC honors. B.J. Elder, uh, one of my closest friends. I've known B.J. since I was uh, about 14 years old. Uh, first met him uh, through AAU basketball. Uh, actually, first time meeting, we was playing against each other. Uh, he's playing on the opposing team, and of course, my, uh, my team won, his team lost, of course. Uh, but the story of our relationship started after that. Um, you know, after that game, BJ had a really good game against us. My coach, uh, for about two weeks straight, anytime we had practice, anytime anyone would miss a shot or, or do something wrong on the court, they say, well, I have a guy coming in here that's He's not going to miss that shot. He'll make that three-pointer. If you miss a layup, you say, I, I have a guy that's going to come in and dunk that one. Um, we didn't know BJ was going to join our team. Um, so I was just wondering, who, who's this guy he keeps talking about for two weeks? Uh, two weeks straight, just kept talking about he has this great player coming to join us that can do everything. Two weeks later, BJ showed up, and it was very indicative of, of who BJ in our relationship, uh, what we'll become, and who BJ is as a person, as a player. At Georgia Tech, uh, BJ, BJ is one of the most talented, gifted uh, players I've ever played with um, in, in high school and college professionally. Uh, he's one of the best players I've ever played against. Uh, when I was a player, I was a defensive guy, and, and he is, to this day was the hardest guy I've ever had to defend. He earned his bachelor's degree in management from Tech in December of 2012 and currently lives in Conyers, Georgia, where he coaches the Clarkson High School boys basketball team. I just want to start by saying good evening to everyone and um, I mean this is a tremendous honor man and I want to congratulate all the inductees again for you know your accomplishments and and you know what you've done to to earn this um, honor tonight um, I mean for me you know when Moose called me and told me that um, you know I was gonna be inducted I was I was really surprised really surprised I um, never even dreamed of you know, being inducted into the Hall of Fame. I actually never even thought about it. You know, I was just worried about if I could get a little bit of playing time, you know, as a freshman, you know, coming to Georgia Tech. But um, to be inducted and to be, you know, amongst, you know, all the great athletes that have come, you know, through this, you know, great institution is a tremendous honor. And I want to say thank you to the Georgia Tech Athletic Association um, for this honor tonight. Um, you know, from, um, next, I just want to, I know you guys see me with this weird looking thing um, on my hand up here. Um, about a month ago, you know, I had an injury, you know, cut my finger pretty bad. Um, had to have surgery to have my tendon repaired in my finger. And, um, you know, for the surgery, my mother-in-law drove me to the surgery. And, um, you know, if any of you have ever had surgery before, you know, you go in and then next thing you know, you're out. And, um, you know, I'm in the recovery room, and like I said, if you ever had surgery before, you know, they give you some of the good stuff. So when you come out, <laughs> you know, you, you're feeling pretty good. And, um, you know, coming out of surgery, I can't remember exactly what the nurse asked me, but um, I, I just started to right away talk about, you know, um, my mother-in-law, like how great she was, you know, for driving me to the surgery. and. I started to talk about my wife and how wonderful she was. And, um, you know, on the way home, you know, my wife is driving me back home from the surgery and I start, I want to call everybody, you know what I'm saying? I'm feeling pretty good now. So I, she has the phone. I'm like, oh, can I call my mom? Like I called my mom and we talked for a little while. And um, then I called my sister. Um, she picks up the phone and I'm talking and she was like, man, they should, um, whatever they gave you, they should give you some of that on induction night, you know, so you can, uh, <laughs> you know, because you're so, so talkative, you know, and I was talking to her about um, her new husband now, who um, is my new brother-in-law, just how great of a guy he was, and um, called this guy, had to talk to him, you know, so needless to say, my point is, the people around me are very important to me, you know, and, um, as much as this night is about us and, um, you know, the things we've done, you know, it's a lot about the people, you know, that help us, helped us get here, you know, and, um, and for me, you know, growing up, you know, um, 
you know, my family was just so important to me. You know, growing up in our house, you know, it was my grandmother, my mom, my aunt, uncle, and me and my sister. And um, you know, me and my sister, and um, and, you know, at a young age, I was kind of confused about what immediate family really meant. You know, you go to school and they do those all about me things on the first day of school. You know, I would put all of those people down. I didn't know they just wanted me to talk about my mom and uh, <laughs> my sister. I would put everybody down. And, um, you know, all of those people that live with me because, you know, we were just, you know, that close. And, um, and you know, it was a house of, of, you know, so much love and, you know, happiness and all of that. And, um, you know, even more importantly, it was a house of great values and great morals that, you know, that they really, you know, instilled in me and, um, you know, my sister. You know, um, like I say, they just, just great people, man. And they, and, you know, they taught me so much about life. You know, they taught me, you know, just how to be respectful towards other people and, you know, treat other people always with respect and, you know, just how to carry myself, you know, amongst people. And um, some of those things have carried me, you know, carried me through life. And, um, you know, one of the, one of the biggest things that I, I took from them was just, you know, their strength. You know, their strength, tremendously strong people, man. And, um, you know, so for me, you know, growing up, you know, I witnessed my grandmother, you know, go through a period where she um, was fighting a nerve disease. And, and she would sometimes, you know, her legs would get weak, she would fall down. I would have to help her up or, you know, my mom or somebody would have to help her up. And, you know, after seeing something like that, you know, when you go down with a high ankle sprain in the Sweet 16 or you pull your hamstring and, um, you know, against uh, Kansas on New Year's Day, you know, you have no choice but to get up. And that's something that, you know, I pull from, from my family, the strength I pull from them. You know, the same as, you know, with my aunt. You know, growing up, she was the first person that I saw go to college and actually finish college. So I remember dropping her off at college. I was a young kid. Um, and I remember going to her pinning ceremony, ceremony because she was a nurse. And, you know, once you see that, and I, I mean, I was a young kid, but I, you know, you hear a little bit of, you know, stories and you understand it wasn't easy for her. And so after hearing that story and seeing her do that, for me, you know, it was never a choice of, are you gonna come back and finish your degree? You know, it was, you know, boy, you better go back and finish because, <laughs> you know, after seeing her go through that and, um, and, you know, come out just a better person, it inspired me to want to do, you know, that as well. And like I said, it was, a, it was just a house of, of love, man. You know, my uncle, you know, who's only nine years older than me, he's actually more like my big brother. You know, growing up, he was actually the one who, you know, got me interested in sports. You know, I would like to sit in the house and read encyclopedias all day for some reason. I was kind of a nerd, you know, at a young age. <laughs> but he got me, you know, interested in sports. And, um, you know, for me, he was that guy who, you know, if I could beat this guy, I could beat anybody. You know, he's only five, nine, I think. I'm probably being generous right now. But, <laughs> but I mean, he, he taught me how to compete. I mean, we would get in the backyard and, you know, I would cry and I would want to quit. And he wouldn't let me, you know, he would, um, you know, make me keep going. And, you know, I think, you know, all of those things, you know, helped me, you know, throughout, throughout my life, um, you know, even outside of basketball. And um, like I said, man, they, they were wonderful. They really worked as a team to make sure me and my sister, you know, got, had everything we needed. You know, we had um, all the love we needed, you know, all the support we needed. And, um, you know, just like any team, man, any team, you know, you got to have that superstar, you know, the person who, the person who, if things don't go well, they get the blame. But when things do go right, I think they deserve a lot of credit. And that superstar was my mom.
You know, I saw her, you know, just sacrifice so much for me and my sister. And, and I don't have enough thank yous, you know, in my body to, you know, just tell you how much I appreciate everything you've ever done for us. I mean, she's, to me, she's amazing, man. She's amazing. And, um, and I know you're sitting there, you're proud of me standing up here. And um, I know I have to say that I'm just even more proud to be up here as your son because me up here is you up here. And um, I'm a rep direct representation of the work that you've done and the work that, and the sacrifices that you made. And, um, you know, that's my mom, man. She was, um, she had a tough job, you know, being a single mother, raising me and my sister. So she had to be a little tough and sometimes a little bit crazy, I guess, <laughs> raising, <laughs> you know, <laughs> raising a, um, raising a male man and she 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 was she, she was tough sometimes but you know she gave us a lot of love and she I can remember this one time and you know this just goes as an example of the standard she set for us at a young age um, I can remember seventh grade pre-algebra Miss Harris's class I got my first B and she lost it man she lost it it was an 88 too it was a high B and she <laughs> flipped out and, you know, wanted to pull me off the basketball team and all this stuff. And I'm just like, even my friends are like, what is, what is wrong with her? I, if I had an 88, my mom would be really happy, but that wasn't good enough for her. And she, and, and all that was her just setting the standard for me and just, you know, telling me, you know, if you can do it, then, you know, you have to, you have to go out and get it done. And um, like I said, those people just meant, mean the world to me, man. Um, you know, they were always very honest with me and, you know, told me, you know, straight up. I can remember a time when they told me, you're not very good at basketball. You're better at football. And um, it made me so upset as a kid, you know, because I wanted to be, you know, good at um, basketball so bad, man. And it made me work that much harder. And, and that honesty is something that, you know, I truly value and something I really connect with. And I think that's truly what connected me with the coaching staff here at Georgia Tech. You know, um, when they started recruiting me, there were, you know, there were no gimmicks, there were no promises. You know, they came into my home and they, and they were just straight up, you know, they told me they wanted me to come here and, you know, be a part of their program. And maybe you'll play, maybe you won't. But um, I respected that, you know, from them. And uh, I can remember Coach Hewitt coming into my home and he, I can remember two things he said. One was, he told me, you're gonna get your degree, which he looked at my mom and he was more of, you know, trying to assure her that I'm gonna make sure he graduates. And he looked at me like, boy, if I give you this scholarship, then you better come up here and do what you're supposed to do and graduate. And, um, and that was something that I, I had a um, lot of respect for and, um, and he also told me, which is, I wish he was here tonight, which he couldn't be here. He told me, your junior year, we're gonna be in the Final Four. How did he know that? I don't know if he was that confident in himself or if he had that much confidence in us, but our junior year, as you all know, we played in the Final Four, which was um, you know, um, a great accomplishment for our team. Like I said, the, the entire coaching staff here um, was, was just tremendous for us, man. I mean, they would, like I said, that, that trait of being honest was something that, you know, I had a lot of respect for. You know, if you went out and you played a bad game, Coach Warren would tell you, you know, you suck. <laughs> and he would say it more than once as if I didn't hear him the first time. But, <laughs> you know, I knew it was coming from a great place and he just wanted you to, you know, be the best that you could possibly be. And, um, you know, as a young team, if you lose to IUPUI, Coach King will let you know you don't lose to IUPUI. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and that was something that, that, like I said, man, carried us. And um, we just had so many good people around our program and in our program. You know, from our, from our athletic trainer, Scott, and, um, you know, our um, therapist, who I spent a lot of time with, Tim Hansen, who flew all the way down from New Jersey. Just so many tremendous people, man. Troy Peace, our academic advisor, who I'm sure I probably gave a lot of headaches. But um, 
a lot of great people in the program, and I think the people at the top, you know, when you have when you have great people at the top, they're going to attract you know more good people. And I feel like that was the strength of our team was the the type of guys that we actually had on our team. Like the character of our team was so was so important, man. We had some really really great guys, and um, we actually formed a great brotherhood. You know, we we play for each other, and um, I think that's a characteristic of a lot of good teams. You can't, you have to have, be somewhat selfless and you have to go out there and compete for each other. And that's, you know, that's what we did. You know, we were a family. We would break every huddle and we would break it with family. And we went out there and we competed and we played for each other. And, um, you know, we always had each other's back. And, um, you know, like I said, it was, it was a family, man, uh, a family of brothers. You know, we had our little brother, Mario, who we call Rio you know, who um, would go out and give 110% just trying to prove to his older brothers that he belonged. You know, um, older and more mature brother, Marvin Lewis, you know, and um, who's here tonight. Um, our older brother, Mo, who would be considered, I guess, the, a little bit crazy, not a lot, just a little bit, a little bit crazy. You know what I mean? And then you had that brother, you know, he has a bit of a temper, but I, I, um, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want to call him out like that. But um, so I guess I would have been the brother who was, um, I mean, just smart, handsome, <laughs> had it all together. You know, I was probably that brother. You know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe I didn't have it all together, but the other two I was pretty um, solid on. And um, like I said, man, we were a family, and that was that was you know, the importance, I think, of our team. And I think that was something that held true for the entire institution. I think um, that's something that's special about, you know, this, this institution is that family um, feel. You know, I hear a lot of people even now outside of, you know, since I'm done here, a lot of people always say, man, you tech, you tech people really look out for each other. And, you know, that's something that I think is really, you know, really something special about this place. and. Um, and you know it's kind of the place that keeps on giving, man. It keeps on giving back to you, and that's and that's and that's awesome to me that we um, have that type of family atmosphere here. You know, a place that keeps giving to the point that you know it gifted me with my very own superstar. You know, my wife, who um, like Brooks, I met here at Georgia Tech, and she is she is like my. Uh, my grandfather would say she's very easy on the eyes, very easy on the eyes. But she has been, you know, tremendous for me. Um, she's been, you know, my rock. You know, even as a young, you know, a young college kid, you know, I would be here and, um, you know, she would always be there for me, always that listening ear, that shoulder for me to lean on. And um, we, after games, when I was upset, you know, maybe Coach Warren had told me I sucked or whatever, you know, I would go back and I would vent to her and she would, sit there and listen, or at least I think she would be listening, um, you know, and me vent about, you know, the problems we had. Um, my, maybe I didn't play well or something like that, and she would um, sit and listen. And uh, much like she does now, I would go on and on, and she would be like, yeah, okay, all right. But um, she has been tremendous for me, man, and has blessed me with two beautiful sons, um, Brayden, who's eight, who says he's gonna um, one day play at Georgia Tech and that he's gonna shoot better than daddy. So, um, Coach LaBerry, class of 2027, man, you gotta check him out. Um, my youngest son, Joshua, who says he wants to, depends on the day, he says he wants to be a doctor or a Batman. Now, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how those correlate, but I guess they both save lives. So I guess he probably, he maybe he has it more figured out than I do. But um, like I said, my wife is, is wonderful, man. And she, you know, gave me more great people. She brought, um, you know, she brought some great in-laws into my life. My mother-in-law, mother my father-in-law, you know, two people who I really admire and, um, you know, hope to walk like them someday. And um, even my sister-in-law, which is going to trip y'all out, she's actually engaged to Mario which, you know, one of my former teammates. So, like I said, this thing runs deep, man. It runs really deep. So, um, <laughs> so.
so like I said in closing, man, I just want to say thank you once again to, you know, the Georgia Tech, you know, the Athletic Association for this wonderful award. And um, I want to say to all my family, coaches, and friends that are here, thank all of you guys for pushing me up here on this stage tonight. All right. Good night.